John Young, Ken Mattingly, and Jolly Duke. This three young men took a ride on a 75, a real beast. 200, uh, 2,500 tons of fuel on these three people at the top of the Saturn V. And they rode three days, approximately 400,000 kilometers, with a velocity of 39,000 kilometers per hour to the moon. Easy, isn't it? So, finally, they arrived at the moon and they injected into the lunar orbit and then they found out there's a problem. Imagine three young people sitting in this capsule going around the moon and then there come, came the order from Houston, wait a moment, we got a problem there. Can you imagine what that is for these young people? And finally, you were glad that you did it, you got the okay to go down to the earth. And then these uh, two of these, John Young and John Duke, they landed on the moon. And it's fascinating to see these pictures of these two men in their suits with this lunar rover walking, driving on the surface of the moon, sampling pieces of rocks and pieces of stones and, and doing experiments. And that for almost three days on the moon and uh, more than 20 hours uh, outside of the lunar module. It was really fascinating. Then finally they went back to the Earth, another three days of a journey back, which is a dangerous journey. And finally Charlie was <coughs> received and welcomed by his wonderful wife, Dorothy. <coughs> and Dorothy, a welcome uh, here in our conference.
back up on 13 and and also is uh, uh, back up on 17 and then we I had the great privilege of flying with uh, uh, in those days of uh, uh, NASA's senior astronaut uh, it was going to be his fourth flight uh, on a, on uh, of his six that he ended up flying and Apollo uh, 16 was uh, uh, very important in NASA. Uh, we trained together uh, with the mission control and, uh, and also the crews in the simulators. Uh, and uh, as the ISS astronauts and as the shuttle astronauts know, uh, you just don't show up the day of liftoff and salute and say, I'm going to the moon. You got years and years of training. I spent 2,000 hours in the simulator. I probably crashed on the moon a thousand times in the simulator. <laughs> but, but when it really counted, we did it successfully. And so I got to know both sides of, of the Apollo missions. Uh, and I enjoyed both working on both ends of that mission, in mission control and, of course, in flight. I have uh, uh, some slides here on PowerPoint that I want to show you. Uh, we can uh, see where I point this thing. Uh -oh. well, here we go. There we go. Uh, <coughs> these are two pictures of me taken in 1972. My hair has changed color. And uh, <laughs> I got a little bit more feeble. <laughs> we had three BBAs, uh, 20 hours and 14 minutes and 16 seconds on the lunar surface. Uh, with our uh, lunar rover, uh, uh, which was out of the electric car, I'll explain later. John Young is the guy in the middle, uh, the, the senior guy, the commander, Ken Mattingly, or T.K. Mattingly is the left, and he was an orbital pilot, uh, and then John and I were the two on the lunar surface. Mattingly was supposed to have flown on Apollo 13, uh, but a week, week before the launch, uh, I caught the measles, uh, and exposed him to the measles. Uh, so uh, the doctors wouldn't let him go, so uh, they took him off the flight and put him back on our crew, so we ended up uh, uh, flying together. Uh, the Saturn liftoff was from pad 39A uh, uh, at uh, Kennedy Space Center, uh, and uh, now this pad is being used by Elon Musk by uh, SpaceX. Uh, and, uh, but uh, it was where all of uh, the, well, the moon missions uh, left from was pad 39A and also a lot of the shuttle missions. Uh, this vehicle was 110 meters tall, uh, almost uh, 11 meters in diameter, weighed 3 million kilos when it uh, uh, lifted off, and we had five F-1 engines uh, developing uh, 3.5 million uh, kilos of uh, thrust, uh, and so you had seven, uh, three and a half pushing six, and the only thing I remember about the whole liftoff was the vibration. And I didn't remember anybody telling me it was supposed to vibrate like it did. <laughs> and I got a little nervous. And Apollo, the windows are covered over at this point, you can't see outside. And I'm on the side of the spacecraft with no flight instruments. And John Young says, you're go, and mission control, you're go. And I said, there's something wrong with this machine. It's shaking too much. And I, uh, so my first flight turned out only flight. My heart was pounding. When I got back, I asked the flight surgeon, I said, what was my heartbeat at liftoff? He said, 144. <laughs> That's, uh, you know, my jogging speed. And so I said, well, what was John Young? What was his heartbeat? Oh, his was 70. So, <laughs> so here's a cool guy. And uh, so anyway, we shook our way in orbit. The first stage is from here down, and it lasted for us 2 minutes and 41 seconds. And uh, we burned over 2 million kilos of fuel in uh, 2 minutes and 40 seconds. Here's a picture of the Earth uh, that I uh, took uh, when we were on about uh, let's see, it'd be about 40,000 kilometers away from the Earth. Uh, not quite, maybe, uh, let's see, 32,000 kilometers. The Arctic Circle is here, of course, down across the United States. 
Here's uh, Baja, California, the Rocky Mountains, down across Mexico. Here's the Yucatan Peninsula and in uh, Central America. Uh, all of the southwest United States is uh, uh, free of clouds, uh, and, uh, and there's a storm system out over the uh, northeast of the U.S. Uh, anyway, you can see blue and white and brown, and it was the most incredibly beautiful sight I'd ever seen. It was just hung in the blackness of space. Uh, from the earth to the moon, yeah, it's always daylight, the sun's always see of the sun, the earth, and the moon. Uh, other than that, you're uh, out there in the blackness of space, which to me, I felt like I could reach out and it be just velvety black. It was really amazing. Uh, uh, <clears throat> this is a view of the uh, a map of the front side of the moon. Uh, just, uh, we, the, the green triangles are the landings of Apollo. The farthest north was Apollo 17. A six, a fifteen uh, on Hadley Rill. Farthest west, east was a seventeen. The last mission. We were the farthest south. Uh, the equator is right in this area right here. Uh, Apollo eleven was the closest to us, but from here to here is about three thousand meters in difference in elevation, and we're up in the mountains of the moon. We've arrived at the moon. It took, uh, as you heard, three days to uh, journey to the moon due to the trajectory and the fuel controls uh, that, uh, I mean, the fuel avail budget we had. So they shot us way out in front of the moon so the first gravity could slow us down. And so when we got to the moon, we had enough fuel to slow down, get in orbit, and then enough fuel to return. Uh, <clears throat> The, uh, here, this, this hatch here is the hatch that you open and uh, get on your hands and knees and crawl out backwards onto what we call the porch, uh, down the ladder, onto the foot pad, uh, and then you can step onto the moon. Uh, below the foot pads were some electrical probes, uh, which they touched the moon. Uh, you uh, shut the engine down and you fell the last meter or, or meter and a half onto the lunar surface. Uh, uh, the, uh, the two windows that we had, major windows, were here uh, and here. The car was folded up and bolted to the outside of the spacecraft in this part right here. This was a, a, a modular uh, equipment assembly. We had a lot of extra uh, stuff uh, stored in there. Uh, this is a, uh, a view of the Earth that I uh, took this also, command modules out here. And at this point, we were going to go join up together because the command module had a problem and we didn't know whether we would get to land or not. Uh, so it was a very disappointing time. You know, training three years, coming uh, 250,000 miles and being within eight miles of your landing site and they're about to tell you to come home. Uh, well, Mission Control saved the day. Uh, by the way, I, I call Mission Control the unsung heroes of Apollo. They saved the day on almost every Apollo mission. And, uh, and uh, Mission Control has my eternal gratitude uh, for solving our problem and giving us permission to land. Uh, we landed on, uh, on a place called the Descartes uh, Islands, uh, the Cayley Plains. Uh, the moon is mostly uh, gray in color uh, and very, very fine grain. Uh, 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 we call it a regolith. There's no organic material on the moon, uh, so it's no dirt like we have down here. And actually the moon is just pulverized rock. Uh, here's the shadow of our lunar module. You're looking to the west uh, into this open valley. Uh, we landed uh, with a vehicle going up from east to west. Uh, so that we'd have shadows uh, on the surface and give us some uh, a partial depth perception during our landing. Uh, looking out the left window to the south is uh, Stone Mountain, and on our second EVA, we uh, drove the car up into this area up here, uh, a place called Cinco Craters, and it was a spectacular view. I have a slide later on for that. Okay, we've got the car out now, uh, and uh, here's the TV camera. Uh, John
Don's, uh, I think that's me back over there doing something or other. The car, uh, you'll see in a video I have in a little bit uh, how it operates and how bouncy it was. From where we stood on the Earth, uh, I mean on the moon, the Earth was right overhead. And in an Apollo spacecraft, you move your head, but the helmet doesn't move. So when people say, what did the Earth look like? Uh, I can't tell you from the moon because I looked up and I I have uh, other people ask me, he said, what did the, when you look down from the moon onto the earth, what does it look like? And I said, when you look down on the moon, you're looking at your feet. <laughs> the same as you do here. The moon's a big object, of course, uh, and uh, about 3,200 uh, kilometers in diameter, so you have to look up into the sky. We were always daylight, uh, sunrise to sunset on the moon is two weeks. Uh, so we were there 72 hours, so it was always daylight. And the sky, the sky was just black except for the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the earth that was right, in, right overhead of us. Uh, uh, this is just a close-up view. We had some, uh, we thought we had a fuel leak. Uh, there's a fuel tank here, and when we docked with the lunar rover, I mean the lunar module, right after leaving Earth orbit, we saw some things floating away. It looked like uh, liquid, but it turned out it was just paint peeling off of this place in here and uh, turned out not to be a problem. Uh, here's a good view of the lunar module, the ladder here, uh, the door, a tracking light. Uh, the rover was in this position here, uh, and now we've deployed it uh, onto the lunar surface uh, and uh, getting ready to, for our first drive. The surface had really good bearing strength. You can see the tires and the footprints. We never sank in. More. The most, uh, and you just, you could, it, it just like, you bounce along. I felt right at home on the moon. Uh, it wasn't an eerie feeling. It wasn't scary. Uh, it was uh, like you belong. And I think it was because we recognized our landing spot and we practiced uh, all of that. The, the EVA and the, and the experiments, and we recognized the major landmarks, so we gave it a familiarity. Uh, <clears throat> I'm uh, saluting the flag. Uh, after the first mission, everybody uh, had wanted to take a, a, a chance of uh, saluting the flag. You're looking to the south here, uh, uh, let's see, west, yeah, south, uh, and uh, we, as I said, we climbed up to Stone Mountain uh, on the second EVA. The flag is held out by a, 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 an aluminum rod, and not because it's got a 40 knot wind uh, up on the There's a vacuum, of course, so there's no atmosphere. Oops. Uh, good view of the car. The tires were, uh, it was an electric car. Here's the steering handle here between the seats. Uh, these are the seat belts that we buckled up. Some maps that I used uh, to navigate us, the instrument panel. Uh, John Young is adjusting the antenna, TV camera. These are all geological experiments back here. Each wheel had its own electric motor, uh, so it was, uh, it was four wheel drive, and the front wheels would steer and the rear wheels would steer. It was a very maneuverable, very reliable uh, automobile up on the moon. <clears throat> Here's John Young's uh, salute. Uh, I can't hear him, but I'm saying, come on out, John, give me a salute, give me a big salute, big Navy salute. And so he did, and he, he jumps off. You notice his shadow doesn't touch his feet here, so he's uh, half a meter off the moon in his jump for joy. We really had a good time on the moon. <laughs> and John was like, has a great sense of humor. And, uh, and he was, I, I was just giggling a lot at him with his one-liners and he was giving us up on the moon. Uh, here's a better picture of it uh, that I took and you can see his shadow here but his feet are up. <clears throat> this is our first stop on our EVA, uh, the first uh, excursion after we put up our science experiments. We drove to this uh, crater about one and a half kilometers uh, to the west of our landing spot. It's come around the edges here. Uh, we don't want to uh, fall into this crater. If you do, you've had it. You can't get out of a crater like that. Uh, so we were very careful.
you'll notice the suits. Uh, we started out with white suits, but the lunar dust is so fine, it gets into the fabric of the, of the suit and you cannot brush it off. So after three days on the lunar surface, uh, and, and walking and falling down and riding, uh, our suits were gray. And we didn't have any airlocks, but in the future missions to the moon, where you're going to stay for several weeks, maybe several months, we're going to need an a, a airlock so we don't get this moon dust inside the, uh, uh, inside the, the habitation module. Uh, a good view of, uh, again, look, this is looking to the uh, 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 north, it'd be uh, uh, southwest over here, uh, and uh, this is a crater called uh, White Way, uh, I'm sorry, South Ray Crater, but it was so far away, uh, we weren't able to go that far. Our limiting uh, kilometers away, and that was limited by the how, if the car broke down, battery. So our limit was about four and a half uh, kilometers. <clears throat> uh, uh, again, another picture of me collecting, oops, uh, me collecting some samples uh, of the lunar surface. We had a rake, we had a shovel, uh, we had just uh, no digital cameras back then. These were film canisters that were Hasselblad uh, 70 millimeter uh, uh, cameras. Uh, and the moon was very rough in our landing spot. It was it ro rolling like this and there were large craters uh, that we had to maneuver around. John Young was the driver and I was the uh, uh, the navigator as with that set of maps. There's an unusual rock. We call this shadow rock. Not on this side but on the other side was the shadow of course. And this thing had some very strange. It looks like somebody put a, a drill and drilled in into the into the rock. Uh, and so I was describing this to Houston. Took some pictures, uh, but the rock was so dense uh, we couldn't uh, uh, even chip off a piece. Uh, again, up on the top of uh, uh, we're now on the top of Stone Mountain, and I'm standing next to the car here and uh, getting ready to do a panorama of the. Of the, uh, of the area. We're probably 100 meters above the valley floor down here where we landed. Uh, this is our major stop on our third excursion. Uh, and uh, I took this picture of John. And over here to the left, there's a crater that's about 500 meters in diameter. And uh, we call it Northway Crater. And it was about 100 meters deep. And uh, as, as close as I wanted to get to the edge, you know, I couldn't see the bottom of that crater, so the walls were really steep. And uh, so we had to be very careful on the rim of these big craters. Here's a, a rock down here. Uh, the problem on the moon that you have is you can't judge distance. You have no familiar objects like uh, trees and telephone poles and houses and cars and people. Now here we get a good sense of, of, of depth perception. But up on the moon you're looking at rocks you've never seen before. And so it was, uh, uh, it, was, uh, it was difficult to judge the distance. So I said, let's go down and sample that rock, John. He argued a little bit, but I talked him into it. And so we went down, we went. And when we got down there, uh, that rock from uh, this end to that end was probably uh, 30 meters, and from here to, to there was about 15 meters. So it was enormous. I'm standing there looking at this rock. I got this little hammer of mine. <laughs> and uh, I whacked it a couple of times and got a piece of it. Uh, I'm going to hustle on through here because uh, uh, let me stop here for a second. This is a picture of my family. I left on the moon. This is what our boys looked like at that time. This is about picture taken about uh, a month or two before our launch. On the back of that, I dropped it on the moon and on the back of the picture we wrote, this is the family of astronaut Charlie Duke from planet Earth who landed on the moon in April 72. The picture's still there, of course all faded away. There's a new documentary out called Lunar Tribute. It's the story of this, uh, of this photograph. Uh, 
that was left on the moon. <clears throat> Off we go, back into orbit. Uh, rendezvous took about an hour from liftoff. Uh, uh, here's the uh, splashdown in the final few seconds of our flight. Uh, we were right on target. All Apollo landed in the Pacific Ocean. Uh, the carrier Ticonderoga picked us up, also Apollo 17, I believe. Helicopter came and picked us up, and so we were taken back on board the helicopter. We did not have to stay in the command module uh, because of a uh, 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 danger of, uh, 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 you know, Andromeda strain or some sort of strange virus. Uh, nothing on the moon. Uh, here we are on board the ship. I'm on the left. Uh, by the way, that uh, uh, that hat you see right there is this hat right here, and uh, uh, Gerhard Dom has an exhibit at the Spire Museum of uh, Space Artifacts, and this and this hat and this uh, what we call the liquid cool garment, which is under the suit, it's fit, it's covered in it's, uh, it's, it's uh, got uh, hoses down the arms, down the torso, and around, so you plug it in and plug it into your backpack and it pumps water uh, through, the, uh, through the underwear. And uh, here's uh, some of the other artifacts that are in that exhibit. If you haven't seen this exhibit, it's uh, one of the largest in Europe, if not the largest. Uh, that, uh, L this LCG here is under this suit here. It's a training one. It's not the real one I flew with. Uh, welcome home by my wife. Uh, we're happy to see her. And uh, that's the end of uh, uh, this PowerPoint. Now, if I could get to rapidly, we'll go through a 14 minute video. And I'm going to try to, I'll be two minutes over if that's all right. And, uh, and this is, okay, started. <clears throat> and it's, it's uh, 14 minutes from lift off to splashdown. Uh, <clears throat> The, uh, the Saturn, uh, you get a good view of liftoff here, uh, and uh, the engines, on the Saturn, the engines took eight seconds to get up uh, to full power before they committed to liftoff. Uh, and we began to move slowly. The white stuff falling off here is ice. The fuel was so cold, uh, that, uh, and the oxidizer, that about several tons of ice uh, were on the side of the vehicle. And as soon, as soon as we started uh, up, 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 the, the, all the ice was gone in just a few seconds. Uh, and uh, so we were uh, shaking our way into orbit. Uh, uh, again, the first stage is from here down. We're at the very top up here. Uh, the, the needle up here is a launch escape system. Apollo had an escape uh, rocket. So if you got an abort, automatic abort, it would pull you off uh, and uh, then you could land on your parachutes. Or you had a manual abort where the commander just twisted the handle and it would fire the, the launch escape system and we would be uh, off uh, to uh, hopefully safety if the parachutes opened. Uh, and the vibration continued the whole first stage and of course the higher you get the more uh, the rocket plume expands because the atmosphere is going down. Uh, the shuttle was 14.7, right? The shuttle flew 14.7 PSI. Uh, we flew 5.5 uh, in the command module, and it was pure oxygen. Uh, and <clears throat> that was our uh, environment. Uh, here's the staging. You can imagine the explosive charge it took to separate 11 meter diameter uh, first stage uh, and then uh, you see the engines of the second stage uh, the blue of the uh, western Atlantic is the first stage that falls away and then the, from uh, the earth then the inner stage falls away in a beautiful picture of little puffy clouds uh, at this stage we still couldn't see outside in the spacecraft this camera was behind looking back and Florida's back over here somewhere where we left from. Here's the first stage. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah. Okay, this is the picture I showed you earlier. Uh, and, uh, with, uh, and this is actually what it looked like to us. We were headed towards the equator in our orbit, or 
out of orbit on the way to the moon. And so the, uh, the Arctic Circle was off to the left. The U.S. looked like it was in the upper center. Uh, and then uh, Mexico back over this way. We, uh, the, the volume in the command module was 330 cubic feet. Uh, and each of us had 68 cubic feet of volume. Uh, instrument panel, everything else uh, was in there with us, all our uh, food, uh, checklist. And uh, I show this because it, it was impossible, it's impossible to get things steady uh, or still in, in zero gravity. Uh, and uh, here's a flashlight we were trying to get stabilized, but you can never do it. So the food we had was uh, in uh, dehydrated in plastic bags. Uh, this is a space shuttle picture. This is Peaky Nelson, and he's just showing you, I want to show you what uh, liquid looks like in space. It takes the shape of a sphere, and so he has his grape juice, and then we have uh, a flying banana. <laughs> uh, I think that's Kurt Brown, but I'm not sure. Uh, we didn't have any bananas, but we did have grape juice. Uh, and uh, then over the lunar surface of, uh, for uh, more than a day, separate from the lunar module. I mean, the lunar module separates from the command module. Uh, and uh, then uh, you see the uh, uh, rendezvous uh, uh, tracking light, the hatch, the porch, down to the ladder from the from the foot pad to the porch was almost, uh, well, about probably four to five meters, and the vehicle weighed about 19,000 kilos at this point. We used half the weight of the vehicle in fuel uh, for our landing. Uh, we were delayed six hours due to this problem, uh, but uh, there again, Mission Control uh, gave us a, a, a procedure that would bypass the problem that we had uh, and so uh, we were able to land on the Descartes Highlands uh, at uh, <coughs> six hours behind schedule. At pitch over, we're uh, now 2,000 meters above the moon. We recognize those two large craters. Uh, now we're probably 10 meters off the surface. Uh, you're blowing the moon dust out with a rocket engine that's only operating at this point about 10% 10, 10 power because you've used up all the fuel. The probes hit the moon, uh, light and light, lights this light, and you hit contact and you shut the engine and drop in. And when you do, the dust clears instantly. It just flies out in a big parabola and lands back on the uh, lunar surface. Uh, very dark in the shadows, but very bright in the sunlight. Again, looking out the left, this is Stone Mountain over here. Uh, John Young was the first out. Uh, always in Apollo, the commander got out first. Uh, and then the lunar module pilot followed about 10 minutes later. Uh, looking, uh, uh, here I am uh, putting this film magazine uh, on the camera. Uh, I noticed it has some dust on it, so I'm <laughs> blowing the dust off. And uh, you can imagine, I felt like an idiot when I realized this was work. Uh, I didn't tell anybody what I was doing, by the way. I was too embarrassed. Uh, we took about, 20, uh, probably 2,500 photographs uh, on the uh, uh, while we were on the uh, while we were on the moon. Uh, here I am. The, the TV that we had, we put on the car, and all we did was turn it on. And there was an engineer in Mission Control control the operation of the TV. He could pan it, he could zoom it, he could elevate it. Here's John for his big Navy salute. Uh, and he gives a little, uh, a little jump for joy that we saw earlier. Uh, and then we swapped places, and then I got my picture taken. Now this is my, that's me, and this is my most embarrassing moment uh, in the whole mission right now. And if you'll notice, I've got, in my arms, I've got this uh, barbell. Well, on the right side over here is $10 million worth of moon experiments. And as I jog along, they fall off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the whole deal. Yeah, but it, in one sixth grade, it just hit and bounced once, and they were, it turned out they were okay. Uh, so we did get our experiments packaged out. Uh, here's John with a magnetometer. This was actually attached to the back of the rover. Uh, notice 
course, uh, as he, he's running across the surface, uh, he kicked, we kicked up a lot of dust, but it just flies out and it lands again. No swirls, it's just no atmosphere. Uh, here I, I had, uh, this is a handheld electric uh, battery powered drill. I had three holes. So I'm working on those. This is the central station that gathered, gathered all the data and directed the electrical power to the experiments. Uh, uh, I'm taking this picture, uh, a movie of the, of the car. Uh, we call it the Grand Prix. Uh, it was the only, uh, of the three rovers that flew, this was the only one you saw fully underway. The moon was really rough, as you can see, as we bounced across the moon. Uh, I'm on a penetrometer here, and I push, and it goes all the way in. <laughs> so down you go. And, uh, uh, and you're on your stomach, you, you got a, a pretty easy way to get up. Uh, so it took a couple of push-ups, uh, this case three. Uh, that didn't work, so one more, uh, almost, <laughs> and then uh, one more, uh, uh, one more up. So that falling down and the car, we lost a fender and all of that, and just raining dust down on us, you can see how dirty uh, we got. We normally collected samples together. Uh, we collected over a three-day period uh, about 98 kilos, I believe it was, of lunar soils and samples. The biggest, biggest rock we brought back was 11.2 kilos, uh, and uh, we argued with them. We didn't want to bring this big rock back, but uh, they said, you, you bring it back. That's what we want. And I tried to collect rocks by myself. <laughs> you can see it doesn't work very well. Uh, so, but I'm determined. Uh, now, 45 years later, I can't tell you why I wanted that particular rock, but uh, I was going to get it. So I flip it up this time more gently, and I catch the rock, but I drop the bag off. <laughs> uh, all did not go perfectly well on the lunar surface, as you can imagine. Here's that shadow rock I was telling you about earlier, uh, and uh, uh, this is looking off, uh, let's see, north, uh, north is over here. Uh, this is to the uh, northeast, south is behind us back over here. Uh, and you can see, we call this the Smoky Mountains. Uh, it was out of our range. Now this is the only time in our mission where I got afraid. We're doing the Moon Olympics, and that's me, and I'm gonna jump for the record, and I fall over backwards. <laughs> and if that backpack pack breaks, I'm dead. And it's a carbon fiber cover. All the oxygen, all the electrical systems, all of the regulators, everything, all the life supports in that thing. And I fortunately rolled right and broke my fall. And John came over and looks down and said, you okay, Charlie? And I said, I think so, help me up. So he helped me up and my heart was pounding. And I looked up and the TV camera was pointed right at me. Uh, <laughs> this was the one and only Moon Olympics uh, that we did. You remember that year was a Olympics were in Munich, and so we were going to kick off the Moon Olympics. The picture of my family, uh, we left the car with the TV camera going, and this is actually a picture of Apollo 17, and I saw it, selected this because the guy got the camera moving perfectly, we left off till the camera reached maximum elevation and he lost us. Uh, uh, ours, we just popped out of the, uh, popped out of the scene before you really got a chance to see what was going on. It took seven and a half minutes to get back into orbit, uh, but then an hour later we rendezvoused uh, with Mattingly at a 100 kilometer uh, orbit altitude. We stayed in orbit for another day and started home. Uh, it took uh, 72 hours to come back. We hit the atmosphere at over 20, uh, let's see, over 40,000 kilometers per hour, probably closer to 41 or 42. And you can see the fireball outside as you plunge in. Uh, we were set maximum deceleration on re-entry on Apollo was seven and a half uh, Gs. And it was sort of a, a, a bell-shaped curve where you hit seven and a half and it faded away. From about 100,000 feet, you're basically free falling uh, uh, into the Pacific Ocean. Uh, and at uh, 7,000 meters, uh, the uh, we call it the drogue chute, 
and it was a small parachute to stabilize the spacecraft so that the heat shield, we were sure that the heat shield was hanging down uh, because all the parachutes are going to come out from the top of the, of the uh, command module and you didn't want to be upside down to get all the, the uh, parachutes tangled. So these uh, lasted until about 10,000 feet or 3,000 meters and then the main parachutes came out uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, they were a beautiful sight of course. Uh, without the parachutes, uh, you do not survive a landing in the Apollo spacecraft. We were right on target, a helicopter flew by, another helicopter's taking our picture, uh, and uh, then uh, we had splashdown, uh, almost right on target, uh, and the uh, landing was really hard. Uh, you can see the white caps, so the sea was really, not really rough, but rough enough, uh, and we hit really hard. And, this parachute stayed inflated and flipped us over upside down. But with some big balloons, uh, we were able to right the spacecraft. And uh, so that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Uh, I hope everybody enjoyed those uh, uh, videos and slides. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Uh, I want to uh, thank Gerhard Don for arranging my presentation here. And, uh, uh, thank you, Mainz, for uh, letting me be a part of this, uh, this, uh, this great symposium. Thank you.